The beauty industry is a $532 billion industry and they're capitalizing on people's ignorance, makeup, cover up, Botox, all these things. Yeah, they're great. They're not serving the purpose of what we're supposed to be doing. If you want health, if you want to look good long term, you want to be able to find it from within. The tweak on how to make your own body generate stem cells. In this video, we're going to talk about six steps on how to produce stem cells from within naturally so that you can look good long term and avoid all the $532 billion expenditure and follow these tips. At the age of about 45-ish, your body no longer produces stem cells. The ones that you have are getting damaged on a daily basis. So when your stem cells start getting damaged, you don't heal fast, you age quicker, and your body becomes more vulnerable to disease. So the stem cells are more like a fountain of youth. If you can find a way to naturally produce more stem cells, you are naturally healing faster. You're slowing down the aging process and your body becomes less susceptible to disease. Here are six tips to generate stem cells naturally. Number one is a 24 hour fast. MIT did research on a 24 hour fast and found by doing a 24 hour fast, stem cells are produced in the body. Number two, the fast mimicking diet. The restriction of calories for a set period of time where you replicate the benefits of fasting while still providing your body with nutrition. Now there's decades of research on this, including several clinical studies where you're gonna shift your diet into a whole food, plant-based diet. You're gonna lower your calories. You're gonna increase the fat intake, natural fat intake. You're gonna lower the carbs per meal. That causes your body to generate energy from a non-carb source. So your body will start targeting the glycogen storages. This process is called glyconeogenesis. Some of the things that you're going to expect while doing this is cell regeneration, decrease in inflammation in the body and fat loss. Now, four days of the fast mimicking diet will help with the intestinal stem cells. Intestinal stem cells are important for fighting off pathogens like candida, E. coli, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and prevent leaky gut. By doing a five day fast mimicking diet, studies have shown that stem cells start to regenerate and replace the pancreas. So people that have diabetes by fasting five days doing the fast mimicking diet, see replenishment of their pancreas. Some of the pathogens that a fast mimicking diet will help with is candida. Now, candida is one of the most common types of yeast infection, and it's typically found in the mouth, the intestines, and on the skin. Normally, we need yeast, candida, and fungus in our digestive system and around our bodies. At normal levels, the fungus is not problematic. However, when healthy bacteria levels are disturbed or the immune system is compromised in any way, candida begins to overgrow. And when the overgrowth of bacteria happens, that's where the problems arise. Now, factors that can lead to candida are antibiotics, high alcohol intake, oral contraceptives, and stress. Now, some of the things that you can take while you have candida are garlic cloves, probiotics to help with your digestion, avoid sugar. Sugar is the food of these pathogens. And you definitely want to start the four-day fast mimicking diet. Another pathogen is SIBO, S-I-B-O, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now the causes of SIBO are complications through surgery, um, any type of altercation in the digestive system allows bacteria from the large intestines to escape back into the small intestines. So what happens when you usually eat, the food goes through your esophagus, it goes into your stomach, and then, you know, based on how much acid you have in your stomach, the food is digested in the stomach and then it gets pushed into the small intestines where it, the small intestines absorb all the nutrition into the bloodstream. And then from there, all the waste goes into the large intestines and out of your body. But if you have some kind of complication due to any kind of altercation in the digestive system through surgeries, the backing up of bowel from the large intestines into the small intestines causes SIBO. 
Another thing would be not enough stomach acid because your pH in your stomach should, should be around from one to three on a, very, it's, it, on a very acidic level. And one reason for the acidity being so strong is because it kills the microbes that are coming that are on top of your food, on your fingers, anything that's coming into your system, the acid in your stomach being at a pH of one to three kills all the microbes. Now, if you have a lack of acid in your stomach, then the microbes are not going to be killed and they're gonna end up in your stomach, in your small intestines. So not enough acid means the microbes are gonna come from the food, go into your stomach, and then invade the small intestines and multiply and start living in these small intestines where the absorption of nutrition happens. This causes nutrition deficiencies because the microbes now that are living in your small intestines are eating up all the nutrition that your body's supposed to be absorbing. Another pathogen would be leaky gut or leaky gut syndrome. Now the walls of the intestines are, they, they act as a barrier, controlling whatever enters into the bloodstream. We have small gaps um, in the intestinal walls called tight junctions, and they allow water and nutrition to pass through while blocking the passage of harmful substances. When these tight junctions of the intestinal walls become loose, the gut becomes very permeable, allowing bacteria and toxins to pass from the gut into the bloodstream, causing a widespread of inflammation. It's kind of similar to having scurvy of the colon. Scurvy is a lack of vitamin C, but now you have a lack of vitamin C to the colon. So normally the tight junctions are about from one to seven microns. Now with a leaky gut, they become anywhere from 200 to 300 microns. Expand extremely and become huge holes in the colon, allowing undigested proteins to pour through the colon. Think of it this way, when this happens, the protein did not get clearance to pass through these borders of the intestines, of the colon walls. Think of these proteins as people crossing the border into a country. If you don't have clearance, you cannot pass. So when you have these openings through the walls of your intestines and people want to cross, they are going to try to slide in without any clearance. So this is where we get food allergies to protein. All these food allergies are all because of a lack of vitamin C in our colon. Now symptoms can be nutrition deficiency, you know, chronic diarrhea, it could be gas, bloating, headaches. There's a lot of symptoms that will come out of this. So, so to prevent something like this from happening, we need more natural sources of vitamin C. So to prevent leaky gut syndrome, you need about, you need approximately seven cups of, of vegetables on a daily basis to get your requirements of vitamin C that's needed. Um, when you take your vitamin C supplement, now here's a problem. When we take vitamin C supplements, most people don't know this, but most vitamin C come in a synthetic version, which is called ascorbic acid. Most people take this thinking that they're getting the whole vitamin C complex, but in natural form, vitamin C is not just ascorbic acid. As a matter of fact, ascorbic acid is the outer layer, the outer shell of the natural form of vitamin C. So vitamin C has a small protective outer shell called ascorbic acid. And that is what they use, that is what the pharmaceutical companies use and claim it as vitamin C. But inside of the natural vitamin C, you have P factors, which is bioflavins, J factors, you have vitamin K, you have copper. All these things are missing when we're taking ascorbic acid only. So the problem with leaky gut is the deficiency of the P factor, the P factor, which is the bioflavin. So when you have ascorbic acid, you don't really get the bioflavins at all. And this is one reason why we, we should avoid synthetic vitamins. So some of the things that could help with this would be foods high in bioflavins, sprouted buckwheat, parsley, onions, green tea, um, the citruses like lemon, limes, um, bell peppers, cabbage. Also, you want to add the four day fast mimicking in your diet. Now, if you're consuming these foods and you still have problems, it could be that it's not your, your diet that's deficient in vitamin C, but you're insulin resistant. 
Now you see how we got to trace things back. This is what doctors don't do. Doctors just prescribe medicine. When you have a problem, you want to backtrack and find out what the problem is. If you do have an allergy, and if you have an allergy to protein, it could be leaky gut syndrome. If it is leaky gut syndrome, it could be that your lining of the colon has a lack of vitamin C. Now, you might think that and you might take supplements and not knowing that vitamin C supplements are only ascorbic acid and you do not have the P factor bioflavor. So then you need to start focusing on eating, eating more leafy greens, getting your seven cups of vegetables a day. If you do start eating more vitamin C on the natural side and not taking the, the synthetic version and you find out that you still have the issue, then it could be insulin resistance. Now, insulin resistance is when the cells in your muscles, in your body fat, in your liver start resisting or ignoring the signals of the hormone insulin, which is to grab the glucose or the sugar out of the bloodstream and put it into the cells. But due to excessive eating and due to also excessive eating of sugar, your cells shut off to the insulin receptors and insulin is no longer able to pass sugar or glucose and nutrition into the cells. So you become insulin resistant due to eating so often. So too much insulin in the body depletes vitamin C. The average person that has insulin resistance has five times the amount of insulin that a normal person does. And what insulin does also is it depletes vitamin C. Another thing that depletes vitamin C is cigarettes. Surprise, surprise. Every time you smoke a cigarette, it depletes anywhere from 10 to 25 grams of vitamin C. So these are things you need to factor in when you have something like leaky gut or a, an allergy to protein. Number three, fast mimicking five days. Stem cells start re reproducing the pancreas, which is very important because a lot of people have diabetes and, and they don't understand that the pancreas is what plays a huge role in diabetes. If your pancreas is not functioning properly, then you need to inject yourself with insulin. So you need to calm your pancreas down, replenish the cells, and, what, and studies have shown that if you want to replenish the pancreas cells, it takes about five days. At the five day mark on the fast mimicking diet, your pancreas cells start to regenerate. Number four is HIIT training, high intensity interval training. Now this is something that you need to put into your workouts because it really affects your body in many ways. So what HIIT training is, it's all out sprint training. It's spurts of energy, hitting a boxing bag really, really quick, as fast as you can for 30 seconds or doing sprints for 30 seconds and taking breaks. It's that fast breathing that triggers growth hormone in your body. So running in your place, jumping jacks, burpees, sprints, punching a bag, anything that involves quick, 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 quick spurts of energy, quick spurts of, of, of movements for about 30 seconds and then take a break. You wanna do this for 15 minutes. And it's very important to go as hard as you can. Resistance training. Now resistance training, which is you know working out with weights or any form of resistance, so workouts that work against gravity, so negatives. When you're doing resistance training, you're working on skeletal muscular cells. Number six would be foods that help with stem cell production. Some of the foods that'll make you feel better and look better are blueberries, blue green algae, spirulina, green tea, pomegranates, and many more. These help with bone marrow stem cell. So people that have osteoporosis, this would be a great idea to incorporate these foods into your diet. And there you have it, the six strategies to regenerate new stem cells in your body to look good and feel good. Most people don't understand what's happening in their body. And this goes back to understanding. Understand your body to prevent disease. Understand religion to find the true faith. Understanding is the most important part to fix the problem. Without understanding, we are blind and we are walking in circles around each other, 
not knowing what we're doing, thinking that there's no solutions, but the solutions are so close, it just needs a little bit of effort to find the truth.